Uh, hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to go over a really good set of answers I got on my you, uh, my Facebook uh, profile and channel uh, group and page, whatever, all on Facebook. Um, so I'm working on my position manager, working on scenarios on when to exit positions. I find getting into positions with an entry is very much easier, but the exit's the challenging part. So I posted this question. Who's interested in sharing their exit position strategy? What technical indicators do you use? I hear MACD and RSI is the most popular combo. I know there's possibly using standard deviation in normal distribution stats as well as some form of correlation between convergence, divergence, and two asset relationships. Let me know if you can tell what your parameters are, and I guess, uh, obviously, thanks. So these are the responses I got from a variety of people. I'm trying to keep them all anonymous. First one is, in my experience, using indicators only delays your entries and exit exits. Personally, I use uh, Bollinger's, and that's all you need. I'll keep the rest of the strategy a secret, if I may. Still finalizing, actually. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, I don't hear so much about Bollinger, but if it works, it works. Now, the common one that you'll see here is ATR, average true range. Can use an ATR stop loss where the ATR dynamically sets <coughs> the stop loss. Uh, and usually people probably might use 10% on average as a human way to generate it. But can use an ATR stop loss, one to five, one, one and a half to two ATR. Some use SAR as well. Um, can also consider to use swing lows to exit as well. Um, here's another one. In my experience, RSI MACD, I only use two, are the only supplementary. I use the best indicator of all, price. Price action is at best. The rest are derivatives. In a nutshell, I use price trend lines. I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to just use MACD and RSI, but from my Monday night event, at my meetup, both guys that were fairly new at it were taught to only use RSI and MACD. That's it. I know there's other ones out there. Um, in a nutshell, I use price patterns and trend lines. In my next bonus video, I'll show you that I'm using trend lines exactly uh, in my one of my options, and that's probably the easiest. Horizontal and diagonals, and if it applies, I use Fibonacci levels 0 0.618, 0 0.382, plus one. I hope it helps. Um, ATR are good for stop loss or profit taking if you are a day trader. Now, again, the markets always move in different modes, in different regimes. 20% of the time, the market will be <clears throat> in a day trading mode. So a recent example would obviously be the market when uh, Trump came to power, became president, the whole market just jumped up until just recently and it's just going through that risk reversal now so that's an example of virtually day trading mode would kick in trading depends on your trading profile agreed your risk profile i use stochastics if i believe it is a market range so what you're seeing here people are using different methodologies of <clears throat> what the market is telling you so as i said if you're in the market 20% day trading momentum, then the, then your your strategy, exit strategy is going to change. And this is a good example, stochastics, for range market, if the price is forming a range, which is a good chunk of the time. Now, uh, one person uh, showed the crude oil uh, here. <clears throat> and actually, this was posted exactly earlier today on Bloomberg as well. U.S. crude is playing with us again, overfollowed. Here's the symbols, can save you a headache with the USO. And this is a simple strategy for <coughs> swing trading. So let me pull that up. So here's an example on stock twits. No, I will wait for tomorrow. So there's no position opening up. Okay. For stop loss, standard deviation or ATR. So there is that um, a standard deviation is usually if you're under uh, a, a like 
wild extreme moves of standard deviation of three. Two is normal. Three is extreme. When you when you uh, do um, stats uh, uh, on it, like normalized distribution, profit taking target profit target depends on the strategy objective. ROI, that's one example, and price and rumors facts seem to work okay with crypto. And this guy's an amateur. Okay, here's here's somebody that uh, is is quite good. Uh, I'd be very skeptical about RSI as an exit strategy because RSI is a momentum indicator. But why exit when <clears throat> the market gains a momentum? Uh, as an example, for me, um, you may want to use RSI, especially when you have a position on looking for overbought conditions. Now, if you know that the market's going into overbought, you probably want to reverse it. <clears throat> it's a lot of experimentation, but when you reverse the position, you're probably still going to be on the up as opposed to allowing the, the position to run when it's in an overbought uh, condition and eventually it's going to, it's going to peter out. Um, that's when the, the dumb money kicks in and sees that opportunity. But because of how I'm doing it and doing it virtually, uh, I can control <clears throat> uh, that stop loss and let the stop loss not interfere with the position when the market uh, or when the position starts to run into a profitable mode. Um, this is the problem with human traders. Well, they just put a stop loss on and they could have had more profit, but their broker kicked them out with a stop loss because that's what they set. Um, so on the other hand, exiting with stop loss loses momentum could be way to go. But again, with programming, you have the ability to change uh, your strategy, your exit strategy based upon market conditions. And that's what I plan to put in my uh, position manager. But RSI's logarithmith, rog, logarithmith, I can never say this, logarithmically scaled indicator. So any small retracement in price will look as a huge slowing down of RSI momentum. And why exit just because of a small retracement in price? A big no-no. Now, again, um, this is in combination with other indicators, uh, not just using RSI alone, uh, as one person already mentioned about using um, the uh, Bollinger as an exclusive way to measure their uh, entries and exits. I did exactly what your second paragraph says in my bachelor work, standard deviation, and two, <clears throat> and two care. When people ride those kind of motorbikes, I wonder if they have big cocks. It's like, you know, that's why they make got to make that noise. Anyway, standard deviation and two currency pair correlation. The problem is that the returns <clears throat> are not normally distributed. So during the summer holidays, two sigma work best. But during the U.S. election, the three sigma perform best at back tests. If you can predict the volatility, you can adjust these parameters. But I can't predict, <clears throat> you can predict volatility, or at least when it's happening on the tick level, uh, both on the Forex pair, as well as if you can get access to the tick data on the options, as well as the futures data in another video I've talked about. Very key, that'll help you gauge that uh, volatility. But I can't predict that. Oh, and another way is obviously an indicator is the VIX or something else. There's lots of indicators out there to showcase volatility. I try to use the Hurst coefficient as it seemed most reasonable to adjust the X sigma exit strategy, and the results were way better. Interesting. So here's a hint here. Anyways, always the best strategy was the ISSL, which stands for Industry Standard Stop Loss. For information, go here. It, it is all there. Hope it helps, man. And boom. Uh, once again, you guys have blown me away on the different methodologies. Um, I will be trying to factor in all the different conditions into my position manager. Obviously, that version will not be the final version. It will be tweaked, but I'll put that up as one of my bonus videos to showcase the code of it. Um, and I think this is probably the most critical point of 
you're trading when you put on positions. It's one thing to get the good trading idea. It's another to get the timing. Then the other is to actually put on the position or the entry. But the real money maker, obviously, is the exit. The exit is really critical. But there's always, as you know, factors that, com that are combined to make a difference on how you optimize your profit potential. Anyways, thanks again, and uh, hopefully I'll put up more videos like this to see what other people say. If you got a comment, let me know in the YouTube. That's why I make this video. Uh, I'd be very interested to see what other people have to say about it. Over and out.